Five games in and fresh off a 50-point outburst against Lamar. Life is good for Coach Rebo and the Colonels. Welcome to the Coach Rebo Show. Nichols picks up a 50-27 to win against Lamar on Saturday. It started from the jump. 26-yard interception return for a touchdown by Austin Dickerson. Your Colonels never look back. Yeah, it was good to be home. Uh, I can't believe already it's five weeks. We're five weeks into this thing. Uh, playing at home is always a special place. I, I told our guys after the game, they've created something. Great atmosphere. Can't thank the fans enough for sticking it out. Got a little hairy there at the end, uh, but we got through it. It was good to see the offense explode. Defense shut them down in the second half. Well, we'll hear that thunder roll in this post-game interview that Coach Rebo and I had. We'll take a look back at the win and hear Coach Rebo's thoughts immediately following number 15 Nichols' 50-27 to win over Lamar. Seven straight home wins in the Southland Conference for the Colonels, and they get a 50 to 27 win over Lamar. Coach Rebo, it was a 23 to three stretch in the second half, where you had outscored Lamar by 20. Momentum, name of the game, all afternoon against the Cardinals. Yeah, well, first of all, man, it's good to be playing at home in front of the home crowd for the second week in a row. Uh, tailgating was outstanding as usual. The guys were in the stands. Uh, we had a little scare again with the, with the weather uh, to start the game off, but it, it was good. Uh, it, it was it was it was a game of some of momentum. You know, uh, we didn't play that well in the first half. We turned the ball over, uh, yet we were still winning. And, and our guys uh, knew what we had to do. We had to clean some things up, and uh, I thought we did that in the second half. Yeah, cue the thunder and what was a 20-10 to 10 game in the first half. But you knew this was a dynamic Lamar offense, and Daryl Colbert kept them in the game. But you overcome those three turnovers and produced 600 of 33 yards. The 633, 110 came from Stefano Grisco, 152 came from Julian Gums in his first career college game. Contributions everywhere. Yeah, it was it was good to see the offense roll. We talked about it. We talked about it at uh, even at halftime again. Go, you know, going into the game, we said we needed some explosive plays and we needed to finish some drives. Uh, and then we went in at halftime and talked about cleaning some things up and not turn the ball over. I thought it was good that we spread the ball around. And Chase uh, Chase was not even on. Uh, like he needs to be on, he he was you know he was high on some throws, uh, but but again to get the to get the running game going like we did was was really really good and uh, Julian stepped up big time for a freshman. 299 yards passing by Chase Forcade and he gets 36 on a screen to Kyron Irvin that Kyron takes in for a touchdown. He gets 65 from Stefano Garisco. How amazing is it that Damian Jean-Pierre moves into third all-time in Nichols history in receiving yards and had one catch for seven yards today? He, he was a decoy for you. No, it wasn't a decoy. They, they did a good job of doubling him up a little bit. And uh, Look, the ball didn't find him. You know, that, that happens a lot. You know, sometimes it finds you, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, the big guy, Dixon, had a nice catch for a touchdown. Chase ran a couple of them in. It, it's just good when you have that, that many weapons that you can spread around. And don't forget about the big boys up front who did a good job of, of yeah. opening up some holes and we were able to run the Football. Yeah, and we got to talk about the defense here because you can see some explosive plays in the first half and think that, oh, you know, maybe that this was a game where the defense struggled. You figured out that option. You shut it down in the second quarter. Austin Dickerson, second time in three games he has a pick six on this field. Yeah, uh, I was talking about it earlier. That Austin was Johnny on the spot. You know, he, he always seems to be around the ball and find the ball and did a good job. He popped up in the air. It was good to get us. The defense always likes to get into the scoring act. Uh, they can do that. Look, I got to give the defensive staff a lot of credit what they did at halftime. They went at halftime and made a couple adjustments. Uh, they did shut it down. But listen, I, I was trying to tell everybody how good uh, uh, their quarterback is. He yeah. does an outstanding job. He runs their offense. Uh, I thought Dan died called an outstanding game. They did a really good job, uh, but the defense stepped up in the second half to shut it down. Three big sacks for the Colonels. They have 20 through five games. And coach, I mean, we just have to look at this field one last time because it's going to be a month until you're back here. You're on the road the next couple weeks, then you have a bye. It won't be until October 27th that you get to return to Thibodeau. Well, the only thing that you know always we talk about every week and what we got to do is uh, we only have one game I'm worried about, and that's the one next week. And so we'll get back to practice tomorrow after we uh, put this one to bed and start focused on Northwestern. Uh, they the, the most important game is the next one that we play. So, we'll, you know, I can't look too far ahead. It's the next game, Northwestern Demons, big conference game. Real NSU rivalry. It's up next at 6 p.m. on ESPN Radio New Orleans. That'll be the first Saturday of October. Colonels number 15 coming into the week, and they get a 50-27 to 27 win against Lamar.
them out, bring them out, hey. Bring them out, bring them out, yeah. Bring them out, bring them out, hey. Bring them out, bring them out. Yeah, please come and laugh from the VIP. Heard the nightlife, lost life with that me. Most of the feds in the state want to see by me. The whole city got pissed, heard he got. There is nothing like it. Welcome back to the Coach Rebo Show, where Nichols picked up their seventh straight regular season win at home. The atmosphere of Thibodeau on a Saturday afternoon, Coach Rebo, it's something special, and your team always rises to the occasion in front of their home fans. Look, they say the tailgating was outstanding. The fans were having a good time. Um, I, our guys adjusted again. We had lightning delay. We had to stay in the locker room for a little while. We adjusted our schedule, <laughs> talked about if we were going to go out uh, we all warmed up together, get back in that locker room for a quick uh, team meeting to get us out and, and run out to the, uh, to the fans. It's never, it's never been the same the last couple of weeks. We've always been adjusting, adjusting, adjusting. Hats off to our players. We actually ended this game with two minutes on the clock, and Lamar was fine with it. You and, and certainly the Nichols Athletic Department agreed that this was the best way to conclude the game. Weather delay would have been a possibility. Two minutes to go in the game. Fortunately, that did not need to occur, and it was called with a 50-27 to 27 win for your Colonels. We came out. We looked across. Matt Rohn, our athletic director, was there with us on the sideline when, when uh, we had this, the call for lightning. The officials came over, looked across the field. Uh, their head coach was talking to their AD. They agreed to that. We, we were going to kneel on the ball anyway uh, just, just to get out of there. So we really didn't lose any football at the end of the game. What's fun about this win is it's a reminder that you find new ways to win against teams that have a different style and a different way to approach you. The spread option in the first half was really lethal for Daryl Colbert, Lamar's quarterback. He had almost 70 yards rushing in the first half negative 10 in the second half well this game is about adjustments and and we knew uh what, the, what they were going to run we knew the option game we practiced it all week but then when you get out there in a different situation sometimes the speed of the game it was a little bit fast for us so we tried to slow it down which Rybeck and them did a great job of they made some in-game adjustments in the half but when they went into halftime and changed it up and really shut it down you talked about it defensively they, i think they held them to 73 or 76 yards total offense in the second half after giving up a few yards in the first. It's easy to become obsessed with individuals when we talk about a college football game, but you always stress the importance of preparing for a team and team concepts. They were running a lot of different slot sweeps with wide receivers and five different ball carriers throughout that game. There was no need to key in on, on one Cardinal because they were trying to mix it up and show you a different look almost every single play in possession. Yeah, and, and what they do, their offense is, does an outstanding job. They make you be assignment sound and a couple of times they they got us but in, in the long run we ended up being okay off of it but their quarterback we knew he makes their system go he's the guy uh, they tried a little two quarterback system at one time we were on top of it I thought the guys adjusted to, to that very well when you look at the second half and and when it just became shutdown mode for the colonels it, it was across the board your defensive line they get three sacks your linebackers another week where Quindus Stive made a big impact in this game and the secondary that's back-to-back -back games you have two interceptions you have four picks your last two weeks Darren Evans back-to-back -back weeks with interceptions it's difficult to find areas to attack against this secondary look you're winning games up front and that defensive line was really getting pressure on them all all game Sully less again maybe not statistically having but he was just causing havoc in there uh, Ollie Dotson those guys got some sacks I thought our linebackers were really physical this mm -hmm. week uh, which really helps us when you can shut down the run game and get physical like they did in the second half Devin Seminole had, had another tackle for a loss and you've got a bunch of veterans that do fly under the radar Brandon Fontenot Devin Seminole but they are so essential to the rotations that you're rolling in yeah you know we, we talk a lot about offensively how we spread the, the ball around but defensively the same thing happens you know, if you don't have uh, one or two guys getting all the sacks or getting all the tackles and you spread it out evenly amongst uh, cornerbacks, safeties, it doesn't matter. Uh, that makes for a good practice the next week. And now we get to introduce you to a freshman that made such an impact in Saturday's game. Let's tell you a little bit about Julian Gums. We'll talk about the freshman from New Orleans when we continue on with the Coach Rebo Show. And now they will turn to Julian Gums, their true freshman running back, making his Colonel debut. He's lined up to the left of Forcade, and he'll get the football. Jump cut left, power forward, first down, Julian Gums. How about that? Your first carry, 11 yards and a first down. You have a stable of running backs. Add Gums to that list, and hey, 
Feed him the football. Nichols is at midfield, trailing 17 to 13. They'll run it to Gums. He finds a hole, hits it hard, and runs over every Lamar Cardinal on the field. 14 yards for Julian Gums. Shotgun snap and a handoff to Julian Gums. He picks his spot, breaks free for a first down. You can't tackle him, Lamar. 45 40, outside of the numbers 30. Julian Gums, the freshman phenom, has gone the distance. Touchdown, Nichols. And it is a spectacular 68 yard run by number 28. Now you see him, now you don't. Touchdown, Nichols. Can you ask for a greater debut? Welcome back to the Coach Rebo Show. Julian Gums, 10 carries, 152 yards. He had to wait until game five of his freshman season. But what an introduction. Well, we always talk about opportunity, and you have to be ready when your number is called. And Julian Gum has been ready since week, <laughs> week one. We talked about it. Uh, but where we were going to play, it, it was not fair to him going in how many carries he's going to get. We, I thought we had a really good stable of running backs. Uh, with Dontrell Taylor, and you had Bussy, and you had uh, Jeremy Rounds at the time, you had Irvin, you had Boudreaux, Jeez. we took Ty Smith, we moved him out to receiver, so it wasn't fair possibly to get him in and maybe carry the ball two, three, four times a game, so we waited for the right opportunity, but uh, that guy, I tell you, that's how he practices, how you see him running on that, that field right there is how he practices, he was patient, he knew when he'd get his chance that he'd be ready. Six foot, 230 pounds is Julian Gums, and he played quarterback at high school at De La Salle, and, and you always like versatile athletes. When you were a part of that process of recruiting him, how did you pitch Nichols to him and making this move to running back? Well, I got to give it to, to Coach Lee Roussel, who, who recruited him and has been knowing Julian for a while. He does a great job, and uh, he knew all along uh, we were up front with him that we wanted him to play running back. I mean, if an opportunity aro arose and maybe there was something, but he was a running back, he showed the skills. What you saw him doing on Saturday is what he was doing on Friday nights. And, and we loved his power. We loved how he, he loved to play the game, yeah. actually. So what you saw then is what we saw earlier. A week ago, Nichols beats number 11, Sam Houston State, and they get a 27-7 to win. Sam Houston State comes back, and they beat Central Arkansas at home in Huntsville, Texas. And we talked about the balance of your backs. 14 carries, 13 carries, 13 carries for your top three running backs. How does Julian Gums affect the plan moving forward with your backs? Well, I, like I said, you always have to be ready. Uh, the plan was not to say, hey, you're going to go get X amount of carries this game, Julian. But right before the game, Don, Dontrell Taylor became ill, so he couldn't go. So then we had Bussy and Irvin, uh, and then and there was Julian Gums ready to step up and go. So it, it just depends on who has a good week this week of practice, who's healthy, who's ready to go. We'll, we'll be ready for him next week. And Julian Gums, his power spoke for itself, but there were a lot of huge holes that this offensive line continued to create that you're able to get such a productive game from a running back without your All-American right tackle. Chandler Arsenal still banged up. Sam Grunick comes in, first career start, and he just fit right in, didn't miss a beat. Yes, yeah, Sam's done an outstanding job. We knew he'd be ready to go. We also had Braston Burnside, got a lot of playing time. I thought that our interior guys played really, really well. Everybody likes to see uh, all game. You know, you, you want to see the big runs. You want to see the guys wide open. But the things that our line is doing for us, they're creating a new line of scrimmage. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I thought Kyron Irvin and I thought Julian Gums did a great job of getting behind that big line, that big push. And then when the time comes, then they'll score it out of there and, and, uh, and, and have the capability of taking it the distance. How much fun is it that we're having this long conversation about the Colonel offense? And we haven't even mentioned Chase Forcade, who combined for five touchdowns. He threw for three, ran for two. Yeah, Chase, Chase is really, really running the offense well. We, we thought that's what's going to take place during the year. He threw for 299. <laughs> we were joking with him yesterday about if he could uh, find one more yard. Uh, I was getting on Jordan Talley about that. He, he, he caught the screen pass. I said, Jordan, you could have got one more yard, and Chase could have got his 300. But Chase is happy to spread that ball around, uh, and he gets this opportunity to just open things up for him. And now we turn our attention to Northwestern State. It's the real NSU rivalry, Natchitoches, Saturday night, 6 p.m. on Cox Sports TV and ESPN Radio New Orleans. We'll get you set for the Demons and Colonels when we continue on with the Coach Rebo Show. Okay. Ah! Oh. Hey, I'm trying to 
trying to get crumb. C R U R. Yeah. On behalf of the Nichols Athletic Department and staff, everyone, we want to thank you personally and uh, everyone involved in the city for the support you've given us. We want to present you with some tickets and hope to see y'all at the game on Thanks, Saturday. Coach. We ask, uh, look, not just for all our employees, but everybody in the city to come out uh, Saturday, 3 o'clock, right? 2.30. 2.30. Right. 2.30 Saturday afternoon. And even if it, the weather looks a little bad, come on out there anyway. We still have a lot of things to do before the ball game. I want to see everybody out there supporting our colonels. How about them colonels, right? Yeah. Yeah. On behalf of the athletic department, we just want to say thank you for all the support you've given us and, and all the school, the football team, all the sports. We want to give you some tickets to this weekend's game. We hope to see you all out there and stand support. Thank you. We're excited about going. If you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Welcome back to the Coach Rebo Show, where last week, Coach Rebo had a chance to swing by City Hall, hang out with Mayor Eshte. You brought <laughs> Colonel T. Lou, you brought the cheerleaders, you brought everybody with as we previewed the home game before Lamar and Nichols took to the field. Yeah, look, it's always great to get out in the community. Our, our players are out there every Friday. They go into schools. They're getting out there in the public. We had an opportunity to go out and deliver some tickets. to The mayor, who is a big supporter of the uh, university, the football program, all our government agencies are really big supporters, along with so many fans. It's good for us to get back to them. And now we have to leave Thibodeau. Colonels will head to Natchitoches for a Saturday night game against Northwestern State. You've had their number the last couple of years. You've picked up this real NSU rivalry trophy and have been able to keep it in Thibodeau. Success doesn't mean anything year to year, but it is nice to have some momentum heading into tonight's game, into, into Saturday's game. Look, this is, this is a whole different uh, year. It's a whole different Northwestern team. Brad Laird is now the head coach. Uh, he had been there before as, a, as an assistant. He came back as the coordinator a couple of years ago, and he's taken over for Jay Thomas. Uh, he's got these guys playing really, really good football. The points that they're putting up on, uh, on offense is really impressive. Mike Lucas is their defensive coordinator, does an outstanding job. Uh, with those guys. We're going to have our hands full. They, they're scoring some points. Last week, uh, they had a tough game against Southeastern. They fell 24-17. to 17. Numerous opportunities inside the red zone that, that, that they didn't convert. They turned it over. Uh, and then they had a chance at, with, with possession at the end to win the game. So they, they're coming home. They're going to be home. They're going to be excited. It's going to be a battle to the end. Northwestern State had two really nice wins in back-to-back -back weeks. They get a 34-7 to win against Grambling State and then a 49-48 to shootout against Lamar in Beaumont. Jazz Ferguson, their wide receiver, had the number three play in Sports Center two Saturdays ago. He had a top 10 70-yard reception. They can score it from all over the field. He is a big-time player. He's a transfer that, that's really ignited their offense a little bit. They got a quarterback that can give him the ball. You know, coaches around uh, the league and around the country all talk, and everybody knows how good Jazz Ferguson is and what he can do. When you, you look at the momentum that you've established, that the beauty of a rivalry game, and especially in the Southland Conference, you, you truly can't throw those records out the window. For some of these first-year colonels that have never experienced Northwestern State and Nichols, what do they need to know? Well, they need to know that this is the biggest game on the schedule next week against them, and we'll, we have to be prepared. We've got to have a good week, like we always talked about. Uh, talking about the NSU, they're going to know about that. We want to get the, look at some of those guys the first year that we wanted, how excited they were to get that trophy. Uh, our new guys are going to know that. We, we just got to go be ready to play against a big-time school, against a big-time game. 6 p.m., Cox Sports. You can also listen on ESPN Radio New Orleans. We'll be in Natchitoches. It's a 6 p.m. kickoff. Colonels and Demons. Nichols, 2-1 and one of the Southland Conference. They are a top 15 program and 3-2 and two on the year as we get set for the first Saturday in October. This is the Coach Rebo Show, and we'll do it again next week on your home for Colonel Athletics HTV.